Hey GED students, let's take a look at this example of utilizing the order of operations. It says simplify each of the following expressions by hand. Don't overthink the word simplify, guys. It just means do the math that the symbols say to do. Utilizing the order of operations. And they say utilize the order of operations. And I say, duh, of course I need the order of operations. There's more than one operation in these expressions. For example, A has both exponents and addition. Anytime we have more than one operation in an expression and we want to simplify, the key there is to follow the order of operations. It's like gravity. And then it says, be sure to show your work as a list of equivalent expressions. Guys, don't overthink this. All I'm saying is I want to see step by step those equal expressions. We're going to have these good secretarial skills that communicate what we did on each line. Remember that the order of operations says start with any and all groupings. And yes, that includes parentheses, but parentheses are not the only type of groupings. We're going to see a couple types here. And then after that, handle any exponents. And of course, that includes the little floating numbers and their inverses. So the powers and their inverses, the roots or radicals. And then after that, we'll handle multiplication and its inverse division. And then finally, addition and its inverse subtraction. All right, so looking at A, like we said, we have both exponents and addition, and according to this order of operations, we're supposed to handle the exponents first. Now, some of you guys are like, there's two, I better move left to right. I mean, I kind of agree with you, except for they don't touch or share any numbers, so I can just go ahead and work them in the same step and it won't be any big deal. But I hope you memorized your perfect squares. It doesn't mean three times two, right? It means three times three, that's nine. But two to the fourth power, you probably don't have your fourth power stuff memorized. So if you need to figure it out, make sure you come over here, do some scratch work. Uh, don't mess up my beautiful mathematical communication with your scratch work. Two to the fourth power means two multiplying by itself four times. So two times two is four. And this two times two is four. And remember, we're not adding, we're multiplying. So four times four is 16. So this two to the four becomes 16. And now here's where your secretarial skills come in handy. I said I wanted equivalent expressions. So yes, I simplified this piece. And yes, I simplified that piece. But I haven't yet dealt with the plus sign. And so it better be there in the next line. And now it's easy to see what to do next. There's only one operation left. It's addition, so I'll do it. And again, I don't care how you figure out what 9 times 16 is. Literally, I really don't. Side work, count on your fingers, call your mommy, whatever. But it is 25. I notice that my beautiful simplified answer goes there at the bottom. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at B. B says the square root of 49 minus the square root of 9. And once again, remember, when I say exponents, I don't just mean those little floating powers. I also mean their inverses, their radicals. And so once again, I'm going to start with exponents before I handle addition subtraction. So the square root of 49, I'm asking myself what number times itself equals 49. Of course, that's 7. And the square root of 9, what number squared or what number times itself equals 9? And that's 3. And I will have my work as a list of equivalent expressions. So I'll have my little equal sign there and I'll drop that minus sign so that we're equal to the line above us. And then it's easy to see what to do next now that I've been a good secretary. 7 minus 3, of course, is 4. And again, my simplified expression, what you guys think of as the answer, is at the bottom. That's where a mathematician goes to look for it. Please communicate with proper math grammar. Don't be jumping across equal signs up at the top. All right. So C, don't let yourself get panicked. Please do remember that we handle any groupings first. Now, you say, Kate, of course I'm going to do this part first because those are parentheses. And I say to you that just because it's a parentheses doesn't mean it's a grouping. Like, take a look. For here, I do have a grouping with parentheses. And here, I have parentheses being used for a different purpose. When I look at C, I can see that I have things inside the parentheses. That's what I mean by a grouping. If I look at E here, there's nothing to do in that parentheses. There's no grouping in there. So the first step is groupings, yes, but not necessarily parentheses.
I will start with this grouping that yes has been grouped using parentheses. Nine minus seven is two. Now, because parentheses can be used for so very much, it's super duper important to say, hey, do we still need these? And absolutely we do, because yes, this parentheses was grouping, but it was also being used to tell me what was being raised to the third power. And see this number shoved up against it? It was also being used to tell me about multiplication. So these parentheses, super versatile. I still need them. They're not used up. I'll keep the parentheses and drop down everything else. Now, a lot of students will suddenly flip out of the order of operations now. Remember, remember that after groupings comes exponents. Please handle exponents before this multiplication. And so my next step that I need to be attacking here is the 2 to the third power. And once again, that's not 6. If I say 2 to the third power, I mean 2 times 2 times 2 times, not plus guys, 2 times 2 is 4. Multiply that by 2 again, and I get 8. This whole thing simplifies to 8. Now, once again, do I still need the parentheses? And yes, I still do to tell me what 8 is doing with 5. The only thing between two numbers is parentheses. They are multiplying. And now my lovely secretarial skills are going to help me out. I know what to do for my final step. Final step is just 5 times 8, which of course is 40. Woo, looking good. All right, next one. Don't you dare let fraction bars panic you. Remember that fraction bars just mean divide, but they're also powerful. The way parentheses can be used to tell us to multiply and to group, fraction bars are the exact same way. And that's how we see them being used here. We see this division, top divided by bottom, but we also see groups. Notice how there is a group on the top or numerator of my fraction and a group on the bottom or denominator of my fraction. We do groupings first and so I'm going to handle those first. So I'm going to kind of like ignore the fraction bar for now and 13 plus 5 is 18. That will be my new numerator and 15 minus 12. Again, I don't care how you figure it out. I'll count up. So let's see 12, 13, 14, 15. So that's 3. So 15 minus 12 is 3. Now, if there's anything I haven't used yet, I need it to drop. So I used this and I used that, but I sure haven't used the divide by sign. And so there it goes, it falls. And now again, with my beautiful secretarial skills, it's super duper easy to see what to do next. 18 divided by 3 is 6. Stop panicking over fractions. They just mean divide. And when we are too lazy to divide ugly numbers, we just leave them as fractions. All right, so looking at E, 22 minus 2 times 9. Now, students do an interesting thing. They will be really good at the order of operations, and suddenly they'll brain fart on a simple little example like this. But please remember that multiplication comes before subtraction. Now, you might say, well, of course, that's parentheses, Kate. No. <laughs> the first step is groupings, not parentheses. But I am going to do 2 times 9 first, not because there's parentheses, but because multiplication happens before addition subtraction. So 2 times 9 is 18. And by the way, why am I doing this with the colors? If you struggle to see the changes in lines, this can really help you using this method. And so I'm going to use my equal sign and I'm going to drop down everything so that my two lines are equivalent expressions. And now again, of course, it's easy to see what to do next. 22 minus 18. I think I'll count up. You guys, I'm too lazy for side work. 19, 20, 21, 22. That's four. Nice, almost done. Last one. Here we go. Again, please don't be intimidated by fractions. Let's just start chiseling away at the numerator and the denominator since they're grouped. Notice, though, in the numerator, there's two operations there. I can see subtraction, but I also have a power. So I'm within a grouping. Well, what do I do when I have more than one operation within a grouping? you still follow the order of operations. So according to the order of operations, exponents happen first. So I'll do that first. So three squared, this piece becomes nine. And I'm not going to get to deal yet with my 17 or my subtract. I'll do that on the next step, just like I haven't yet dealt with my division. But since that bottom expression shares no numbers, it's totally separate. I can do it at the same time. Now, please do remember 
<laughs> that one to the fourth power does not mean one times four. It doesn't mean one times four. It doesn't mean one times four. It I mean, like, I can't even say this enough times, guys. What does it mean? It means the same as one multiplying by itself four times. And I really don't care how many times you multiply one times one. One times one is one. One times one is one. One times one is one. So the bottom of this fraction is just one. Now, some of you guys are super duper excited because you know what happens when the bottom of a fraction is one. It just kind of drops away. doesn't really do much. But for those of you who are like, huh, what are you talking about? Don't worry about it. <laughs> we'll keep simplifying according to the order of operations. We won't take any shortcuts. So 17 minus 9. Again, I don't care how you figure it out, but don't mess up my beautiful communication with your side work. 17 minus 9 is 8. I still need to divide. What am I going to divide by that 1? And of course, 8 divided by 1. And now you can see what the rest of us were getting at, you guys. 8 divided by 1 is just 8. Dividing by 1 does nothing. It's kind of like when the bottom of a fraction is 1, it just goes away because dividing by 1 will not change the number. And I get 8. Woohoo! Let's check all of this with our calculator. Okay, I love your GED calculator. It can handle these long expressions for you. So here we go. We're getting to practice for both the non-calculator section and the really important majority of the test, the calculator section. So anytime you want to type in these more complex expressions, you need to be typing like a mathematician. You need your calculator to read the way a mathematician would read. So hit mode for me. Make sure you're in math print mode. If you're like me, your calculator probably already is meaning that word math print down there at the bottom is already in black. But if not, just arrow over to math print, press enter to select it and clear to get out of the screen. And now you're ready to type like a mathematician. So let's do three squared plus two to the fourth power. So three, I'll hit the X squared button and then plus two. Now, if I want an exponent other than two, I need the caret. So caret the fourth power and enter and we can see that I have 25. B is a square root symbol. Take a look and notice that the square root symbol is on the left over there in green. Anytime you want something in green, hit the second button, that green button. So I'll hit the green second button, then X squared, and it gives me the square root and 49. Now notice something right now. You are currently under that radical, that square root symbol. If you keep typing, it's going to grow with you. And that's not what we want. We want it to end. And so so what I'm going to do is arrow out of the square root of 49, and then I can type minus, and that square root ended. And again, if I want the square root of 9, I'm going to hit the second button, the x squared button, which the square root is above, and 9, and enter. And you should get 4. Next one, 5. If I use parentheses, you use parentheses, okie dokie, because remember, they're more than just multiplication. They're also grouping. And I'll type in 9 minus 7. Close my parentheses before I raise it to the third power. And we do get 40. Next one, let's see. Oh, a fraction. Guys, if you want a long, complex fraction like this, please hit your fraction bar first. Okay, so we'll do D there and we can then type 13 plus 5 on the top, arrow down to the bottom before we do 15 minus 12, enter, and that's 6. Hey, okay, let's do E, that one's easy, 22 minus 2, and even though this one doesn't really matter if I use times or parentheses, I'm going to go ahead and type it exactly the way I see it. And then once again on F, guys, you want a complex fraction, please start with that fraction bar, that N over D bar. And I get 17 minus 3 squared arrow down to the bottom or right. It gets you to the same place. 1, use a caret to get another power besides square to the fourth power. Enter. Look at that. It is 8. Nice job.